coconut oil. Leave the kitchen stuff. <laughs> Don't put it on your face. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Lady Bold. My name is Jessica Vandelay. Ding, 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 it's Brigadine. Hi, I'm Shamira Modli. This is Gizem. This is Salim. My name is Brandon Beek. I'm Shane. I'm Zitabi Macheli, better known as the Skin Girl. I am a skin influencer and beauty editor. And this is Skin Out Loud by Nivea. Where I'll be talking about skincare routines, so stay tuned for those glowing tips. You wear a lot of makeup, right? Yes, like, yeah, for drag, I have to wear like tons of makeup, like yeah. layers of concealers, foundation, liquid foundation, and then powders, mm. and then like the blush on. And then you have to wear it for hours. And then, so late at night, you gotta be, you know, partying as well after the performance. You know what, like when it comes to re removing your makeup is so important. And I think cleansing the skin is one of the most important steps of a skincare routine. And I think a lot of us, sort of like underestimate the importance of it. So do you think you should maybe consider having two different kinds of cleansers during the month? Like one when your skin is not too hormonal and the other time when it's in its best time uh, post your period. When it comes to skin, you really need to be, it's a relationship. You sort of like need to understand what your skin is communicating with you. So for example, if you have oily skin or oily combination, highly recommend foaming cleansers or gel based cleansers. And then if you have dry skin, cream cleansers, are very good just to bring back that nourishment into the skin. I think that's the thing about skincare is that I've learned is, you know, that that narrative of it, you know, mm. if it's if it's kind of stinging, it's working. Yes. Where mm. I think that really we have to have our skin for so long in our life, and we really need to figure out a way to be gentle with it. Mm. I struggled with severe acne, and it was like, oh, what's happening? Mm. And then you go to school. Everyone's bullying you. Really? Yeah, I dealt with a lot of bullying with my skin, but I'm good now, okay? <laughs> so, so what was your approach? Was it like trial and error? Did you have someone to advise you? So I just went on the journey of trying to get education from reading skincare journals and research. And that's what really helped my skin. I wish at the time when I was struggling that someone online could share like all these gems and education because at the end of the day skincare is science right yeah. what's your routine now i focus a lot on hydration and then of course sunscreen so so important sure. i think we can all agree <laughs> when we travel it's really a challenge so yeah. you need to pack light but in the end i don't want to uh sacrifice something about my skin as well because we do some uh, video shoots on yeah. the top of the mountain maybe in the very early morning so it dries out sometimes a lot of sun so i really like this tip don't pick moisturizer and sunscreen separate just just put it in yeah one. put it in mm -hmm. one it's a really good travel tip i think it's important to use the two finger rule um i don't know if you guys know about it no. so that's that's the adequate amount of sunscreen you should use like crossing uh, you know on your two fingers you know as an athlete i'm in the sun and you get exposed you know by, by the rays constantly and you're gonna get burnt and something that people don't know is that if you burn um, that can actually release uh, some free radicals in your system and that leads to excessive fatigue and that can fatigue my performance so as an athlete, like like yeah, pretty right? much. Wow. So if I burn, I'm affecting my performance. Yeah. So by taking care of my skin, I'm actually taking care or improving my quality of performance as an athlete. Yeah. Wow. I love that idea of like sometimes things that we can perceive as real challenges for our body push us in a direction. And I think speaking to maybe the mothers in the room, obviously pregnancy and, you know, all the changes that come with that must be so challenging. For me, it's been a nightmare. I've yeah. got dark spots on my cheeks yeah. and white spots on my forearms, yeah. you know, and, and it's a constant battle. It's a constant thing of trying to just manage it. To be honest, hyperpigmentation is an issue that a lot of people struggle with, but Nivea has a very amazing serum, Voluminous 630 amazing for hyperpigmentation. Um, when it comes to skincare trends, which trends have you been enjoying? Or which trends are you super curious about? One of the most, you know, difficult things with skincare is 
knowing what trends to resist for your skin because you look and you're scrolling yeah. Yeah. through your phone and you're like, oh, I want to try that, I want to try this. But I think, you know, like I mentioned before, your skin isn't really something that's a, a, a science project for you to experiment on. <laughs> it's a living organ in your body and you kind of do need to just you know, take a chill pill and like not be engaging in every single trend. And it's more like a journey, right? To find mm. your own routine. And I think sometimes it takes time. I still didn't yeah. found it yet. Yeah. But yeah. And there's nothing wrong with a little bit of like gentle experimentation, I think. But yeah, which is another thing, you know, when it comes to products, it's, it's not, skincare is not a one size fits all. Today we spoke about skincare routines on Skin Out Loud by Nivea and I'll see you on the next one. Yay! <laughs>